In today's program, we will meet in an interview one dedicated servant of the truth. Stay for this eye-opening encounter with Rabbi Rami Shapiro. Rabbi Rami Shapiro is the director of the One River Foundation, an educational not-for-profit that promotes the perennial wisdom at the mystic heart of the world's religions. An author of 36 books, Rabbi Rami had a congregation in Florida in the USA for 20 years and now lectures all over the world. The One River Foundation, headed by Rabbi Rami Shapiro, promotes what they term perennial wisdom. The organization summarizes this wisdom in four points. One, all life arises in and is an expression of a non-dual infinite life that's called by many names, ultimate reality, God, Tao, Mother, Allah, Yahweh, Dharma, Kaya, Brahman, and Great Spirit, among others. Two, you contain two ways of knowing the world, a greater knowing called Atman, soul, self, spirit, mind, etc., that intuitively knows each finite life as a unique manifestation of infinite life, and a lesser knowing called self, ego, ahem, kibber, etc., that mistakes uniqueness for separateness and imagines itself apart from rather than a part of infinite life. Three, awakening the greater self and knowing the interconnectedness of all life in the singular life carries with it a universal ethic, calling the awakened to cultivate compassion and justice toward all beings. Four, awakening your greater self and living this ethic is the highest goal you can set for yourself. Perennial wisdom is a global spirituality rather than a global religion. With a deep respect for different religions, the One River Foundation sees the common thread of wisdom that's highlighted within each faith tradition. And it is this central wisdom that they see as providing the foundation for a new, spiritually rich civilization. Today, we are privileged to hear about this perennial wisdom from the rabbi himself. My name is Rabbi Rami Shapiro. I'm the director of the One River Foundation that promotes the perennial wisdom at the mystic heart of all the world's religions. Perennial wisdom has got four basic points. First point is that everything in the universe is a manifesting of, and then you fill in the blank, reality, nature, God, mother, Allah, right, Dharmakaya, whatever, whatever, you know, Brahman, whatever your terminology is. The, the idea is that everything that exists, you and I, the room we're sitting in, whether it's sentient, not sentient, animate or inanimate, it's all a manifesting of God. Mm -hmm. Second point of the four is that you and I, every human being, has an innate capacity to awaken to that truth. The third one is when you have that awakening, you are, you have no choice but to act morally, ethically, compassionately, you know, with respect for all beings. And the fourth point is this is the reason humans exist, to awaken to the divine and live, to awaken to God and live that godly lifestyle. And in its early stages, Judaism was very much an expression of these, of these four things. So as a rabbi, that's what I teach. I find the texts and the teachings that articulate those, those four points. So, for example, when uh, it says in the, in the Torah, in the Bible, uh, it says that it, the, tech, the, the term in Hebrew is ain od. There's God, and then it says ain od, nothing else. So the mystical interpretation of that is there's nothing else but God. Everything is a manifesting of the singular reality. Conventional understanding is there's no other God but God. So the perennial approach is always from the mystical end. So it's not just that there's only one God. It's that there's God is the only thing that exists. I mean, this leads into, into the whole issue of vegetarianism, uh, which is, is a central part of just the way I live personally as part of this perennial uh, philosophy, but I don't insist other people do that. But in the Jewish tradition, it says that we are not to cause unnecessary harm to animals. Uh, 
I'll come back to that one, but also in Leviticus, it says, love your neighbor as yourself. 30 some odd times the Bible says, love the stranger. So when you take the Leviticus text that says, love your neighbor as yourself, I taught Bible for 10 years and in the university. Mm -hmm. So in my classes, I would say, what do you think this means? And the students, there's always someone who says, oh, it means I have to love my neighbor as I love myself. But the Bible never tells you to love yourself. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. What it's saying is your neighbor is yourself, not the egoic self, but the capital S, Atman, Brahmin kind of, kind of self. So in, in Judaism, the narrow self, the lowercase self, the consciousness of that self is called mochin de katnut, small mind or narrow mind. And what we're trying to do in the mystical end of any tradition, but certainly in Judaism, is move from narrow mind to spacious mind, from mochin de katnut, narrow mind, to mochin de godlut, spacious mind. So when you're in spacious mind and you read Love Your Neighbor as Yourself, you realize that your neighbor is yourself. We're all part of the same you know, body of, of the divine reality. When it says later, you, know, you, you can't uh, cause an animal unnecessary suffering, it's, to me, it's the same reasoning, because we're all part of the same reality. Eating animals is unnecessary. So whenever we slaughter an animal in order to consume it, we are causing the animal needless suffering. So I haven't, I mean, I, I don't eat meat, and I haven't eaten meat for 30 some odd years. And I did it simply, it wasn't like a decision. It wasn't like, okay, I've got to do this. This is going to be tough. It was simply part of that realization that this is my sister, this is my brother, it just fell away. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that is paradigmatic of the whole notion of the third point of the four perennial wisdom points, that when you have the awakening, you begin to live more compassionately, more justly. So for me, one of the things was this, the cessation of eating meat. Once, once I realized that my, my sister cow was my lunch, I, I no, one, no longer wanted to do that. So it just, it just fell away. grateful to the respectful Rabbi Rami Shapiro for making time for this interview and for sharing his deep insights on these matters. It was a pleasure and privilege to have you on our program, Rabbi Rami. We wish that your humanitarian mission be very soon celebrated with a universal success that we are all looking forward to. For more information on the One River Foundation, please visit oneriverfoundation.org. Devoted viewers, it was an honor to have your company on today's program entitled Four Basic Principles of a Godly Lifestyle, Interview with Rabbi Rami Shapiro, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom 